Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back to episode 4 FM 18 American Glory an FM 18 experiment. So I'm again recording this in pretty close proximity just cuz today's a play day and I'm on vacation, so you know, I'm going to get a lot of recording done. Looks like uh most people want to see the, uh, you know, some matches, you know, one or two a year. So we'll continue to do that. I think what we'll do is we might do, uh, I might do two matches and then a year, year in wrap up in each episode. And we'll do one year at a time. Now, in the meantime, somebody else had said, no, nah, you know, I don't think you need to do that. But, uh, so I went ahead and just simmed ahead. Plus, we were in the position where our guy's still kind of young, hasn't really gotten into the mainstream just quite yet. So, the last video ended uh, in mid-June of 2020. And so I have simmed to the end of 2021. So we've gone ahead a year and a half to take a look at our guy and that gets us through the end of the next season so let's take a look at him and see where he is he is not with a club hmm wow he's available on a free oh my goodness ooh that's odd because he was worth over a million dollars he was 1.1 million I think last time I looked right all right um, all right he made his debut against Cur Curacao and then in 2021 this was the season that just ended he got his first international goal against South Africa he's hoping to attract the attention of a big club I wonder if he refused a contract and they so they've just listed him to get him out the door um, he is wanted by who FC who the fuck is that I'm guessing that's in Iceland it's just a guess just a guess have no clue who that is um, Denmark. Okay, well, same neighborhood, sort of. All right, well, they have great training, great youth. They are in the Danish Superliga. Okay. Interesting. All right, well, let's take a look at him and let's see if we can determine what has happened. What is that? Oh, interesting. All right, so he was with Colorado, started 31 games, scored six, three assists, six, eight, six, so a little bit better. To be fair, he had a bad 2020 season, just one goal in 25, but he's, he's getting more game time. That's the important thing. All right, so... If we look at the 25 matches, six were non-competitive. Those were the friendlies. 21 were in the league. Four of those were off the bench as a reserve. Five were cup games. And he came off the bench as a sub in an international. Okay. So he didn't play horribly. Four, four assists in 21. And then this this past year, five friendlies, 31 starts with six goals, three assists, one cup game with an assist, five international games, and six sub appearances with a goal and a 666 rating. Okay, so not the greatest, but he is doing he is doing relatively well. 
Uh, let's see. He has 12 caps now for the, for the United States men's team, 25U20. So he's got 37 caps for the American national teams, seven combined goals. Okay. And then, all right, I don't know what the December waiver draft is. I guess anybody that gets let go goes into, you know, you can sign them. So Toronto has signed him. All right, now, what has what has developed from that? All right, so 12-14, his contract. Now, his contract was not up until December 30th. Oh, there goes the mailman. Uh, so they put him on waivers because they weren't going to re-sign him, evidently. And because he was on waivers, Toronto picked him up, but then decided not to sign him. That's weird. Why would Toronto not sign him? I mean, their key player is Bradley, who's in his position. Bradley's 34. I mean, ratings are still good. His technicals are actually probably better. I'm wondering if maybe that's something I screwed up, is not making his technicals better as well. But, I, you know, my thinking was he would develop. All right, so he is... He's... he's so he's not signed with a club. All right, now let's. All right, RC has been attracting interest in recent weeks, but no contract offers tabled yet. Now, who do they have in their mid? Senior squad. This would be his position here. Well, I mean, RC's probably pacier, better fitness. It's probably a wash. This guy's a better finisher for sure. Passing and and everything and and uh, technique and and vision, work rate. His ment, you know, I think RC's better mentally. But this guy's only 24, and he's already got 42 caps. Wow. He's Bulgarian, so 42 caps for the Bulgarian national team. It might be hard to break into that lineup. Hmm. Now, Tor oh, Toronto FC actually holds his rights. I guess they could still sign him, right, for next season? Because the season is just getting ready to start. Wow, that is odd. Uh, let's see. Attributes. Dynamics. All right, so he his favorite personnel is Peter, Peter Vermez, who's the men's national team head coach. No current concerns on vacation. Not not worrying about anything whatsoever, right? How old are we now? He's 21. All right, so, I mean, he's he's still not even in his prime yet. So, yeah, I think maybe leaving some of these numbers in, in single digits may be hurting him long term. I was really kind of thinking that somebody in Europe would pick him up. That was kind of the thought process. Um, injuries. All right, he did get hurt this past year, seven days. So, so nothing major. Everything's been very minor, basically a week, if at all. Huh. No 
no notes. All right, well, so we're going to come back in a year. I'm going to, well, I'm going to, I guess what I'm going to do, I'm going to go on vacation until March. Now, the only other thing, when does, uh, these guys, the Danish Superliga, where's their schedule? Um, well, I don't have the Danish Super League listed, so I may have to go in and add that if, uh, if he goes there, because I am not seeing any uh, matches outside of the European Cup, which I guess is actually good. I mean, they're in the Euro Cup. Oh, no, Galatasaray. Ugh. All right, so Ajax, Feyenoord, Spartak Moscow, okay, Tottenham, hold, you know, so so you know he can get into the into your into Europe, and start maybe appealing to some people that way. All right, well I'll see you guys. Uh, like I said, I think what I'm going to do is go till say the beginning of March. I'll do like two months. And just see if he gets signed. And then when he gets signed, I'll come back whenever that happens to be. Uh, and uh, kind of catch you guys up. And, and we may watch a match or whatever. So, anyway, I'll see you when I see you. I have simmed ahead two months, as I told you I would do. We are March 1st, 2022. And I've peeked ahead. I had to to see if I needed to record, so you can guess what that means. Our young American has signed, but the question is, where? So you'll remember he had some interest from a Danish team. Now, I don't know if the game will not let him transfer there because I don't have that league active or not. I don't know the answer to that, uh, but let's go in and see where he ended up. Where do you guys think? Put down your guesses before we go into the card. Where do you think he ended up? All right, well, let's find out. He's at Everton in the premiere. Well, Everton is in ninth position. This is going to be great for his training and his reputation, right? Uh, he is not their key player. He is not a hot prospect. I don't even know if he's starting. So all I saw was he had signed with Everton. I immediately bailed out and fired up the recording. So let's check out our young RC, our American, who is now playing in the Premiership. All right, so... He's making a million dollars a year. He has signed a two-year contract. So that's for the 2022 season, 23 season. And that brings us all the way to June 30th of 2024 when the premiership ends. So it looks like he signed a two-year deal. He's already made one appearance with Everton and it was not off the bench. So that's good. We got number 35. That's that's not a good sign, I don't think. Eh, okay. Uh, so let's let's uh, let's check the milestone here. All right. So Everton signed him on January 8th. So this was just a, you know a week after we had last recorded. So he was not on the market very long. So they really jumped on him real quick. And they got him on a free. Okay, so I don't know what the deal is with the MLS being able to sign on waivers. And then, you know, uh, I don't know. Anyway, he's got one app, a 6.4. Okay, that's 
that's not great at all. Um, he's made nine appearances in not in friendlies with one goal. He's come off the bench once in the Premier. So he didn't get much time. And he has made six international appearances with a goal this year and a yellow card. I think that's the first yellow card of his career. So he's with Everton. All right, let's take a look. Looks like Barkley is their right mid back. They're playing a 4 4 2. He's 28, so he's a few years older. Well, he's a, eight years older than our guy. Yeah, his technicals are just much, much better. I'm, I'm hopeful that now he's with a premier side that that training will really kick in and start boosting his ratings. Now, this guy, although he plays the same position, can also play attacking mid. Now, that doesn't help us if they're playing a 4-4-2. However, you know, they could change their tactic. There's nothing that says that won't happen. Hey, they don't like Man United, so as a Leeds uh, player, as a Leeds fan, he'll get along fine. Uh, fierce rivals with Liverpool. Okay. All right, so not a hot prospect. So let's, uh, let's take a look at their players. And there's RC down here. So he is on the list. Mid-center. All right, Morgan Schneiderlin. Ross Barkley. Idrissa Guy, Guy, R.C. Nabil Fakur. Boy, boy, you wouldn't want to be saying that on TV, would you? <laughs> Nabil Fekker, you Fekker. Andreas Pereira. Now, we never did learn wing position. I don't have the crossing, so that's not going to work. So, you know, I, I really built this guy to be strictly a center pitch forward distributor. Now, he's still a hot prospect. They're calling him a hot prospect, and they're paying him a million dollars a year. So, nothing wrong with that. Uh, we've made three under-23 Premier Division Cup matches. Three U23 Premier Division. We've been in a Checker Trade Trophy. Two World Cup matches. Six off the bench. So we're not even starting all the North American matches. Now it could be that. Oh. World Cup playoff. Coracal made it. Did we get eliminated? All right, let's see. There's the first round. Second round. Third round. Fourth round, group one. Fourth round, group two. All right, there's the U.S. So we, we got an automatic buy, it looks like, into the fourth round. Group three. Four wins, one draw, one loss, 13 points. Uh, we advanced, all right, so that's the fourth round. We advanced out of the fifth round, second to Mexico. Okay. And then the playoff. Curacao, Paraguay, New Zealand, Qatar. I'm guessing we didn't have to play in the playoff, that we make automatic qualifying here. I'm just guessing. Just guessing. I really don't know. Um, 
Oh well, all right. So we'll be keeping an eye on the U.S. Of course. But again, you know, only if RC's playing, right? So he's with Everton. That's a, that's good. I mean, he's valued at eleven point two five million. So we'll see what he can do. He's got the new contract. He's not listed for transfer, so that's good. Was he? Uh, no injuries this year. That's good. All right, so I'm pretty excited. All right, so as we said, what we'll do is we will come back with one match. Let's go see who Everton plays and figure out where we want to come back at. All right, so we're late in the season already. So oh, that's right. We were we were in America and the season started in January. They're already halfway through the season at that point. So we're in the home stretch. They're in ninth position. They're 11 points behind Liverpool for the playoffs. And they are 18 points clear of relegation. So relegation shouldn't be an issue. Who do we want to come back and watch? Um, why don't we... Why don't we go ahead and come back and attend the Chelsea game? And this is what I'm going to do, because I don't know that he'll be starting, and I don't know that he'll play. I, I will come back for the game. I will record it. If he doesn't play, then I won't keep it. We'll just skip to the end of the season and um, do a season recap. And then once it looks like he's playing regularly, then we'll start watching the matches again. That way you guys aren't sitting through a match for nothing, since the whole save is about... Uh, RC, the American player, not Chelsea or Everton or anybody else. All right, so I'm going to get up to that game, see what happens. So we'll either see you for the match or into the season review. See you guys in a minute. Hey, guys, wanted to pop back in here real quick because I was browsing around before I got started on the next season and realized we hadn't looked at this. So... Let's take a look at RC's goals for the season. He scored a penalty in the 10th minute to uh, put Everton on the board. They ended up in a 2-2 draw and lost on penalties in the second round of the Cup. Then he scored in the 55th minute a game winner on the road against Brighton. And then he scored in the 21st minute the clincher against Brentford at home and then he scored in the 85th minute so a late match clutch game winner on the road against Middlesbrough so that was a huge goal maybe the biggest of his career up till this time and then he scored another game winner in the 46th minute at home against Brighton so two game winners out of his four goals that's uh that's pretty good all right anyway Moving on. See you guys back in a second. All right, so we're going to wrap up this episode. I decided not to record a match. Uh, as I mentioned in the last segment, let's kind of wait until our, our guy is, is playing regularly and there's something to actually watch him do rather than, you know, sit on the bench in a, uh, in a coat. So let's get into the short list. Uh, Actually, you know what, before I do that, I did notice that uh, the Everton job was open. Uh, ooh, Yap Stam. Is he an interim coach? Or was he appointed? Okay, so he was just hired. Uh, he was hired away from Wolves, where he's been for two years. And Everton hired him uh, just a couple of days ago. All right, so Yap Stam has taken over Everton, and 
So that's what's going on there. And we're already here. So there's RC. We can check his career stats. So his first season with Everton, he ended up appearing in six matches uh, in the league as a sub. No goals, no assists. Played a 6.38, so not very good. Um, 20 apps, 5 goals, 2 assists, and non-competitive. No cup, no continental. 6 international, 1 goal, 6 starts, 6 subs. 1 assist, 1 goal. And let's see. Overview. So he's up to 13 caps for the United States, still with one goal. Uh, he still has uh, two years left on his contract. So he signed a three-year deal, and his value is $10.5 million. So not doing too bad. Just not playing a lot. Um, still a prospect, still just 21. So, you know, hopefully here in the next couple of seasons, we can, um, you know, we'll see him actually on the field, I hope. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, so, I guess the game plan at this point, was he injured any this year? No, he was not. Uh, dynamics. Honored to be at the same club as the be as as the, the Fecker, the Fecker, and his mother is Mother Fecker. I, I don't know. <laughs> That's just uh, that makes me laugh. All right, um, information driven personality. Um, still, just a fairly good reputation. So his reputation has not taken off. Uh, he's fluent in English. He became fluent in French. Okay, so that's good. Uh, he is declared for the United States. First international, only international goal, right? Uh, let's see. So he needs 1,680 days to become an English national and 1078 days to become a canadian national i'm guessing he's not going back to canada that was from his stint in with toronto fc for a couple of weeks all right so i guess what we do at this point is we just keep on keeping on um i will go ahead and get to I'm going to check, you know, like about the quarter way of the season next year. I will check and see if, if he's playing regularly. If he is not, then I'll check again at the three-quarter position. And if he's playing regularly, then we'll come back for a match. If he's not, we'll just do a year-end wrap-up. And what I may do is I may go ahead and go two seasons and do a two season wrap up in one video just to kind of condense you know what we're looking at i you know at this point at this point i don't know if he's going to become if he's going to become very good um let's see if we go in and we look at his ratings i'm not going to edit anything else but i just want to take a look so current reputation out of 10,000 is 62 so about 62 percent current reputation 68 percent at home 50 almost 55 percent worldwide so he's in the upper half of the of the players in the world as far as ability and reputation um i just you know i i don't know i don't know that he's I'm wondering if these other attributes that I left alone are going to be what keeps him from taking that next step. My hope is is that because he's only 21, we have 
we have two or three years, right? I mean, you know, we have two or three years before we really start worrying about it because, I mean, let's face it, he's he's not playing. He's not playing on the U23 side, right? Yeah, I mean, he's not ma he's not playing any matches for Everton's U23 side which tells me that he's good enough to be on the senior club, just not good enough yet to break into the lineup. Now, here's the problem. Do they loan him out to give him first-team soccer to where he can start realizing his potential, or do they keep him as a bench player? And... You know, what does that do? Does that stunt his development? Does that end his, you know, basically, you know, limit his career ability? But already we have seen success because, you know, we've made the jump from the United States to the Premiership. So he was good enough for that. And I guess it'll be interesting now that he's gaining a little notoriety or not notoriety but a little recognition on the world stage uh that he might pique the interest of, of some other clubs but i'm thinking what the next step would be is at 21 and i'm just thinking if i was managing everton you know he would probably have to go out on loan if i couldn't give him the starts because that's the only way he's going to continue to develop or he's going to stagnate and we're not going to see any improvement. So that wouldn't surprise me, I guess. And when did he come in? He came in, uh, yeah, 1-8. So again, that was in the January transfer window in Europe, in the, in the premiere. This was the very start of the MLS season. So, you know, they brought him in. Maybe it was just to get him and they couldn't tramp, they couldn't loan him out fast enough. I mean, they had a few weeks, but, you know, maybe that was kind of their thinking, hey, we just want to get this player in, let him start developing with the team, and then maybe they'll loan him out next year. So if he does loan out, we'll come back because if he's loaned out, I'm guessing he's going to be playing regularly. So we'll see. Guys, thanks for watching another episode. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button if you like the video. Subscribe if you're new or if you haven't. And as always, I appreciate your support of the channel and hanging out with me and watching, you know, watching me be stupid on, on these videos. And uh, much appreciated, guys. Have a good one. Um, I am recording this on the afternoon of the 23rd so this might go up christmas morning might um so if it does a very merry christmas uh boxing day happy hanukkah whatever else you celebrate or don't celebrate uh, but uh have a very good holiday merry christmas and we will see you guys in the next episode take care Bye.